All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, no one. Uh, no, I haven't really up yet, but we do have some questions to answer. So uh, my name is Al Urock. I'm one of the owners of Solutio. With me here is Travis Gear, also one of the owners. Um, so we're here to answer questions. Um, we've gotten some uh, through our Our Power page. So um, we're going to keep that going uh, here going forward. So it'll um, every month uh, when we send out the date, it'll always be solutiosoftware.com slash power. That's where we'll live broadcast as well as have um, the ability to see some of the old broadcasts and uh, ask questions there. So it seemed to, um, there was some interest to get the questions answered beforehand, which was great. And that way um, we can uh, know a direction ahead as opposed to wait for folks. So looks like we have a few viewers online. So that's wonderful. Um, so, uh, and you can keep questions rolling if you go to solutiosoftware.com. Uh, slash power, you can go ahead and join in the discussion and answer things, or maybe if I didn't clarify things correctly, certainly um, send me a note in there and uh, Travis will help uh, keep us on the right path. Come on. <laughs> All right. So, I don't know, maybe we need a little better lighting on Travis. There you go. You're fussy. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, first question comes in uh, from Christ Our Hope Parish in. Lithonia, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, probably not. Um, but uh, they're uh, one of our newer parishes. And the question was uh, asked, uh, asked about uh, changing up some of the pictures in their main rotator. So I'll pull that up here on my screen. Doo -doo -doo. All right, share. And um, this is a common element that a lot of our parishes have. Um, it was some type of large rotating images. Um, to kind of emphasize particular things that might be going on. So it's a great area for that. Uh, all right, so, oh, um, so what we're looking at here is these, uh, or it says children's choir or welcome. Um, and we can kind of see those pace through. Most of the time we'll have little arrows and folks can, um, they can get through the slideshow. Um, at their own pace as well. So that, that's a fairly common element. Different slideshows will work in different ways. So sometimes the text will appear on top. Sometimes it'll be down below. Sometimes it'll only be a picture. So we'll talk about some of those variants as we get and, and dig in a little bit further. So uh, to start off, uh, obviously to change anything, I'm gonna need to um, go into the administrator. So we'll hop into there. Okay. Now, the large majority of these rotators we have set in uh, to just display articles. It's easier that way um, and something that most folks are familiar with editing. There is a slight minority, or uh, there's a, a minority there that um, we do set up directly in the module manager. So uh, just to give you a little bit of background, this slideshow is uh, what we call a module. Um, and we have the option of putting the content right into the module, or we can pull from an outside source like a list of articles. So for some folks out there, um, they'll have to click on uh, module manager first and then be able to, um, they'll have to find it in here. I already have it search for rotator, so it pulls it right up, but um, it might be one of these listed in here. Typically we call it either rotator or we call it uh, slideshow. You'll know the difference if yours is driven by articles or by directly into the module itself um, by the icon that's listed here next to this particular module. So if it's got the Joomla icon with the different colors intermixed, then it is pulling from a Joomla component. So, and, and that would be an article, a uh, list of articles. In here, I have one of them set up is um, that the content is actually listed in the module itself. And so, um, that's where it has this little toolbox with the gears. You see what some quick links here on this particular parish. Um, they have it directly, uh, the content is directly in uh, the module itself. So just to give you a look at that, if we, oh, it's locked. Sorry, Brenda, we'll pop you out of there. Um, if I get into there, um, I will see the content directly in, in the uh, module itself. So I can change up some of the links and things like that, change up the pictures. Um, you can notice that these are some of the ones that are on the front page. And we can even add new items here on the right-hand side. So just to give you a little bit of background, I know that's a little bit longer of an answer, uh, you know, maybe some details you need to know, but 
um, it, it will depend a little bit about how your site is built. Now, for the large majority of folks, we um, integrate that into the articles uh, part of your website. And the reason is because articles are very flexible. You can publish and unpublish them. You can um, have them expire. They're, they're just much easier to um, manipulate uh, and, and uh, kind of reuse. Whereas if we plug all the information into the module manager, you kind of have to delete an item to get rid of it, and then you're gonna have to start over again. So long story short, that's what we do there. So I'm gonna click on the article manager. And um, again, this will vary uh, depending on where you're at, but um, in the article manager, I'm gonna filter down for that particular category. And typically we name it rotator and then we put an all caps needs picture um, and that helps to kind of clue you into the, the fact that that particular item will need a picture in order to be changed. Um, I'm gonna check all of these in, just so I'll be able to manipulate them. Okay, so we see lots of them listed here. So say children's choir, if I dig into that one, I'll be able to see a sample. And we see that here's the children's choir, the title. We have the text that belongs in there. And I'm logged into the, um, into the advanced mode, so um, you don't see, um, I don't see the regular editor with bold and italicized. I see more of the code. So um, I think we're okay for this example, so I'll just leave it there. But these little P um, symbols, those are um, typically what you encase in a paragraph. Anyway, long story short, just ignore those. I am in the advanced mode. Um, but we see let the children sing, and then underneath images and links, we're gonna see a full article image. This is the image that is gonna rotate along with that slide. So if I look here and I get to the um, children's choir, here it is, uh, that's the title, and then let the children sing, that's uh, the text that belongs there, and then that full article image is the image that goes back here. So. If I want to create a new one, I just need to do those same items. Children's choir, put in a category, put in um, the uh, something into the into the body of, of the item, and then plug in a full article image. So if I want to do that, um, probably the most, um, I guess the, the, the thing to be the most aware of is being able to resize um, a picture that's the right dimensions. And this isn't the end of the world, but you'll notice as I scroll through these pictures, there's some of them that haven't been cropped to the same dimensions. So you see Mother's Day 2016 kind of drops down and it's, and it's too tall. Um, so you have the option of doing that. For me, I really like to keep them all the exact same dimensions so that way it doesn't, you know, um, it won't go up and down like that. But again, it's not the end of the world. So um, in order to check those dimensions, what I'll do is I'll typically take the image and I'll drag it to my desktop. And I don't think you can see that, but if you just click on the image and then uh, click and drag to your desktop, it'll give you a copy on your desktop. Um, and you can do that pretty much with every website. Um, and I can see these dimensions are 1200 by 450. And I'll just go ahead and share my entire screen. Um, okay, so when I do that, I click and I drag, drop it. Oh, I already have a copy, so I'll just copy and replace. And then if you um, hover over, or you click off of the image and you hover over it, I know you it's probably too zoomed out, but it'll tell you the dimensions in there. So it's 1200 by 450. So, um, there are lots of different ways to crop images. Um, our favorite method, as I'm sure uh, to the dismay of many people like myself, um, it used to be uh, using uh, Google Picasa, but that tool, you can still get your hands on it, but I have a hard time kind of recommending that because it really has gone away. So um, we need to find a new method. So a new favorite website I have is bulk resize. It's just bulk. Yeah, bulk resize photos.com. And I've started to put links um, out there. Uh, so let me, I'll just put this in the discussion. Um, link for resizing images. 
I'll post that as I go. So I put it into the comments, so if you wanna uh, know the link. So what's great about this tool is um, it's pretty simplistic. Uh, you drag your images into here, and then um, you tell it the, the exact dimensions you want, and it will be <coughs> off to the races. So um, I'm gonna, uh, I don't have an image, so we're gonna look up uh, cats, maybe. This has been my favorite thing to do lately. Okay, so we need a pretty good size image. So here's one that's larger than what we need. Um, so I'll just I'll click and drag. Oh, I'll probably click into it, click and drag it off, and um, I'll, I'll do my screen. Okay, so now it's on my desktop, and then I'm going to drag it back into here, into this box, and then uh, bulk resize will give you lots of different um, uh, options. So scale, longest side, width, height. I want exact size because I want it to be exactly those dimensions. So I click there, and then it very simply gives me I want 1200 by 450. Now, um, when you do this, the default option is going to put uh, if you're uh, if you need to crop it, like it's it doesn't quite fit the dimensions. Um, it's going to use padding. Okay, if I click on Pro on the left hand side, I can I can choose some of them options. So I can use padding. No padding. Uh, if I use no padding, it's going to stretch that image, um, or I can keep the proportions, and it won't um, do any of that. So um, that's the option I'm going to pick, and then it's going to put like a background color behind it, basically where it has to crop. Um, that it'll um, there'll be um, where it has to crop. There will be uh, either transparency or you know in the background or something like that. If I want to do JPEG, it doesn't do transparency, so I'd have to have a background color. So if my cat wasn't quite the right dimensions, I'm going to see maybe white on the left and right hand side, and it's going to center the cat there. But if I want to, I'll just try this PNG, and I'll use a transparent background, and that way the cat will be in the middle, and then there'll be transparent parts, and so you'll see how that works here in a few seconds. Okay, so PNG. Transparent background, I'll start resizing, and it um, resizes it, and immediately um, downloads it to my desktop. So there it is there in the corner, and it's on my desktop for me to use. So if I take a look at that little guy, uh, let's see if I can bring it into the window. Um, there's what he looks like. So we've got on the one side, there's some transparency here, uh, and on the other side, there's some transparency. That really doesn't matter. Um, you see white because the background of the page is white. So anyway, um, all right. So if I want to add the new uh, item, now that I have my picture, that's the hard part. Um, so this is my cat picture. And hello, everyone. And then so cat that you need the category. So that's going to be the title. You're going to have the category. You're going to have the text. Then. Um, under images and links, I think I said full article image is what was filled in from before. So I'll hit select and it'll pull up my items. Uh, generally, I kind of, uh, we kind of um, keep these in their own folder so that way there's not too many in here in the base folder. So rotator's already folder that's been created for this. And then I'll upload my file to my little kitty. Up he goes. And here's my cat. Hit insert, and here we go. So we'll uh, leave that up for a few seconds and then pull it off. There's my kitty. Take him down. <laughs> you will notice, so it's already down on the other side, but you will notice that um, just depending on the setup, uh, you, you can see the transparency comes through. So if you wanted to, to block it off and have that same color all the way through, um, when you're doing the bulk resize um, here, you might just choose JPEG instead, depending on your website, um, and then choose a particular background color. The default is white, but you could choose the background of your website or something like that. Um, and then that's what's going to be on those sides instead of the brown. Okay. So, big thing is images. Again, this is a free website that works pretty well as far as if you're not very familiar with resizing images and you're able to pick a particular size. The other thing that's just super great about this is once you get all of your uh, your settings set, 
you can share these settings. So if I click there, and it will give me a link that then I can, um, so if I say copy this link, and I put it in here, I could star this item, uh, put it into my favorites, and now, uh, let's see, I'll put it in my bookmarks toolbar. There we go. So now if I come in here, click on bulk resize photos, when I drag my image in, it already has, has all of my settings already built in, so I don't have to pick any of those. So once you know that size, and if you have any difficulty finding that size, just give uh, Solutio a ring or, or send us an email, um, service at soluciosoftware.com or 888-414-1031, extension 102 for our support line. And uh, we can certainly tell you that size, get that for you pretty quick if you're having any difficulty with that. Then you can just drag your little picture in and it'll do the rest. Excellent. Good work. <laughs> so big thing is, and I don't know if we'll get your picture back, but big thing is is resizing images, making sure that they're not too big. Again, some of the slideshows are more tolerant than the others, um, and they'll uh, um, they'll allow for larger pictures, and it won't be that big a thing. Some some templates and the way things are set up, they look a little weird when they're not the exact right size. So could your mileage could uh, kind of vary there depending on your particular setup, but I do like things to kind of look similar. Seems to to be a little bit better. Um, and also, if you guys have other tools you like to use, Photoshop or whatever else, the big thing is just making sure that size is correct. So, where should we go from here? Well, you got a bunch of new questions. Bunch of good questions. You got to do say so. Show new comments. Okay. So, uh, where should we start? Start down there and work the way up. Um, or, yeah. Well. Kathy Peter uh, from Resurrection asks, is there a way to show the whole article under parish headlines instead of have always always having to read more, perhaps to change the title to parish news? So Kathy is at Resurrection, so let's pull their website up. I wonder if I should make my screen a little smaller. Um, Just in case. All right. Um, sure. All right. So, is there a way to show more of the items instead of having to click on read more? So, I think uh, what Kathy is talking about are these parish headlines right here. So, this is a common component that we use on a lot of our sites, um, and it is called a rock sprocket component. And we have it set. Um, the idea here is to shorten up the home page. So um, by restricting the amount that is on um, the site here, we can have it be a shorter page. So that way it doesn't go any longer here. But uh, instead of just listing the headlines, which we do in some sites, um, we can at least give people a little bit of a preview as well as a little picture um, as well, so it can help to kind of you know grab people's attention. The alternative would be like um, Fires of Faith is another website. I think they just do the straight headlines. So there's kind of three variants here. That I want to show you. My um, friend, come up. There we go. Cool. Um, all right. So if I scroll down here a little bit, I see parish headlines. So here you're not going to see inter any interactivity. They're just going to be listed out one after the other. Okay. The other alternative is, um, and I think what Re Resurrection used to do is, they, um, each one of those headlines would spell out the entire story. So it would be kind of like a blog layout, if that makes sense, where it would list the title and then all of the content um, uh, down below. So, Kathy, where this comes from, and the, the way, and so this is totally customizable, um, is in the module manager. So I'm going to hop on over to the administrator. And if I go to the module manager, sorry, I'm kind of doing that quickly. Um, typically, that'll for, that's only allowable for administrators. So you'll see that. Um, uh, so we, we see this button here. If you don't have that button available, just depending on when we built your site, it'll also be underneath extensions. So I'll click on module manager here. and um, it'll list all of those out. Um, in this particular case, so here's all the modules. Um, 
in this particular case, the module I'm looking for is called Parish Headlines. So typically that's the, the title up top. So I'll just do a search here for headlines. And we see Parish Headlines listed here. So I'll click on that. Okay, so here's the guts of this um, module and it allows us to change some of these settings, which um, might be right up your alley, uh, Kathy. Um, preview length. This is the number of words it's gonna show before it automatically cuts that off. And again, that's purely something to make sure that the page doesn't expand too far, but we still get to see some of the headlines. So here's what we can do. If I get rid of the preview length, it's gonna change it to infinity, which means it's gonna show the entire article. Okay, so I'm gonna save that off and let's take a look at it, see what that looks like. So that's it. So in, in this particular case, that's kind of a short headline, so that would be fine. Um, if you uh, put in your read more, then it's it's going to, to list it out like that. And it looks like, Kathy, um, you must be all over this as far as making sure those read mores are in. So in this particular case, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but if you didn't put in your own read more, then it, you could see how it, it could get really long. Like the, the, what is a collect? That's a little bit of a longer one, but still pretty tolerable. Um, so if you're going to be diligent, so I'll just assume that uh, on this website that you'll continue to put in those read mores, but the uh, component allows us to automatically put in the read more with the preview length. Um, if we get rid of that, it'll just, uh, basically break whenever you put the read more in if you uh, and, you know we could we can make that 10 words we can make that 100 words we could put it out whatever we want um, but in this case we'll just we'll go ahead and leave well let's see here let's leave it at 200 words just in case someone else plugs it in there but for the most part it'll break wherever you have read more the other thing we can do to control length here is how many previews per page so right now it's set at seven which is a little bit longer so we see seven headlines, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you have to go to the next page of results um, to see additional items. So you can see how that rolls through. So, um, so it's seven per page. So if we wanted to shorten that up maybe a little bit just because um, we have so many, so we'll, we'll just do six instead of seven. Um, and that'll shorten it up a little bit, but still allow um, so things don't get to carry away there. So that way the bottoms uh, of the, the items will still kind of match up and there's room for you to put a little picture in there and stuff. So, Kathy, hopefully that is, uh, gets you to where you want to go. But all the settings are there in the module and, and I went ahead and changed them to um, allow for up to 200 words before it, it forces a break. All right, let's go to our next question which is how do I update announcements? And uh, Elena is from Christ Our Hope in Lithonia as well. Lots of questions from out there, that's great. All right, so announcements is here on, oh. Gotta make sure you can see it. There we go, that's a good idea. All right, so on their website, announcements is listed here. Now. <clears throat> I don't know yet because I don't know how announcements is powered. So let's take a little look and I'll get rid of some of our other sites we've got. Do, 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 get rid of my kitties and this. Okay, so if I get back to Christ Our Hope and we're gonna take a look at the control panel to see how that's populated. Because it's usually populated through either articles or um, documents. So in this case, if I look up uh, announcements, here it is, it's a list of articles, and it is pulling from the category of announcements. So if I want to update the announcements area, what I would do, go to the control panel, click on add new article, I'll plug in the title, so this is an announcement. And then I'm gonna put the category as announcements, which will be listed here somewhere. Announcements, it's at the top, okay? And so, um, again, I'm in the advanced center. Uh, this is There you go. Okay, so I'd save that off. 
And now if I come back to the home page and I refresh, there is my announcement. So, and it works on a very similar model, it looks like, as uh, Resurrection, where it'll put the title and then um, the text and then do a read more. So I'm, I'm assuming here, if you put in a few announcements, um, it'll, it'll just show the, the, the title for some, and the first one, it's gonna show the actual article. And so if I click on read more, here's the entire page. So the whole magic behind all of this, get rid of my kitty here too. Um, the whole magic around uh, all of this is to set the category as, it's in, just like any other um, article, but the category is set to announcements. Feel like you did okay then? Yeah. You approved, Travis approved? No. I think it was good. Okay. I think one thing you have to keep in mind as you're watching now is that like in that instance, he's, his editor looks just a little bit different, um, but it's still the same, same principles, so. Got another quick question from St. Philip Neary in uh, Midwest City, Oklahoma. And the question is, uh, we could use a few more email accounts. Can those be added easily? Well, uh, it depends. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look. Um, I'll pull up on my screen here and see uh, which kind of account uh, you guys have. So what I was looking to check on is whether or not uh, this particular parish has their email through us. And sometimes that can be kind of a common misconception is that because we work with you on your website that we also take care of your email. And it isn't always the case. Uh, they can, in essence, live independently from one another. Uh, so it just depends on when your parish or your organization signed up, uh, how did you, did you choose that as one of the options? So, and depending on when you signed up, depend might uh, actually determine which kind of membership you have to Google as well. So let's see here. And again, this is just for them in particular. As I was looking that up, uh, don't forget. Uh, assuming you're watching this on the um, on our website. There is still this spot there where it says join the discussion that you can add more questions along the way. So you see the ones that have been submitted there. And it looks like I accidentally put Kathy Peters in twice. Uh, so yeah, if there's those of you that are watching, if there's other questions that you have, please put them out there and we will make sure and get them answered. Um, let's see here, it's not telling me which edition. They have 11 users, so um, if I add another one here, we should be good to go. Yeah, it looks, um, so Steve, you should be good to go to create as many accounts as you want. Um, so just to, uh, to give you a little bit of difference around what some of them are, um, typically uh, there's two companies that we worked with as far as providing email. Um, there was a, uh, a small time period where Google did not allow for uh, nonprofits or churches to have email accounts. So during that time period, we activated a few Outlook.com accounts, um, which Microsoft has since dropped, but if you're grandfathered in, they'll at least let you keep the accounts you have. So I don't know if that will change over time, but I think that happened about, oh, a year and a half or two years ago that they um, removed that. Um, the ideal situation by far is to have Google Apps nonprofit or education edition. Those allow for pretty much unlimited number of email addresses. The only uh, place that someone might have got caught in with us, maybe if you signed up like uh, eight, nine years ago, among some of our, our initial clients, is uh, they had a free Google Apps edition, uh, which you know, um, some people are still grandfathered in. For a while, they allowed for about 50 accounts, but they don't have all of the features, um, like some of the, certain things like room reservations and some pretty cool things on the calendar side um, and some other advanced features. Uh, those accounts don't have, but they got grandfathered in. They allowed for about 50 accounts for a while, and then they moved to about 10 accounts, um, and then they disbanded that altogether. They got rid of the, just the free to anybody because businesses could have used it. We use it still today. We're still getting that grandfathered plan. If you want to 
if you are a private business and you want that, then they charge businesses, and there's lots of them that they do, um, $50 per user per year. And so it's not just over your limit either, it's all together. So if you have five accounts, you pay uh, $250 per year um, on that. If you had you know, 10 accounts, you'd pay 500 and so on, uh, which is still a great deal. They're a great email service um, and they're wonderful. Okay. So for the majority of folks, they fall into either the nonprofit or the education edition, but you have to apply and get accepted to those. If you have a school, a Catholic school, then probably um, we'd recommend, I think education edition gives you a few more features and um, there's things like Google Classroom and things that, that Catholic schools can use that work out pretty well. Um, and you have to provide things like um, your accreditation and things like that. So you have to go through the approval process doesn't take a ton of time, but um, somebody kind of has to know some of the particulars about the school in order to get that, uh, to get all the right information in. And then uh, for most of the people we work with, uh, we will help you apply for Google Apps Nonprofit Edition. And so parishes really qualify under the USCCB. Um, there was a time period where we, uh, when we were applying with different parishes, but you have to be listed in all of the proper, like, oh, what is it, like, guide book thingies um i don't know all of the, like the nonprofit deals and so um it was the parishes weren't really listed in there and they had a tough time uh, getting approved but the usccb is in those uh, all of those books and the nonprofit editions and being a sub i don't know some kind of sub organization of the usccb uh, parishes qualify through that um, we have had ran into some problems recently that if you don't have the US, US CCB listed on your website somewhere, um, they will refuse you. Uh, so a lot of times we actually launch the email after we launch the website where we put that into the links section or something like that. So keep that in mind. Um, so so yeah. for you, Steve, you know, if you want, <coughs> you know, if you would like um, more email addresses added, just let us know mm -hmm. and we'll take care of you. If there's anybody out there that, that doesn't have Google Apps and would like it, uh, you can let us know that as well. If you are a, um, a sponsorship-based parish, then no big deal. It comes with the package. And uh, otherwise, if you're not, if, if you're a parish or an organization that works with us um, on a fee-based model, then we can let you know what the cost to be there as well. So we can help. That's the key. Um, let's see. Other questions? Take a look. So it looks like. Oh, I, by the way, on email as well, we can uh, enable particular users to be um, to be admins mm -hmm. as well. Right. So um, it's typically good uh, policy to keep that a very very limited number. So maybe one or two at each location. Um, we're set up as an admin to help you through all of that, but uh, we can certainly add those, and we can give specific permissions like. So you can help add new users or reset passwords. But again, as far as security sake, you want to keep that a very small list. So, and usually somebody that's a permanent member of the staff is a good idea. Okay. Excellent. Other questions? I think that's all we've got right now. Uh, do we have any of the other, like, no, place where I've they were asking questions? No, I've checking everywhere. I mean, I'll double check that. <laughs> I was really trying to link out my answers and stuff to sound intelligent. So you talk pretty fast. I do. Sorry, <laughs> I can talk slower. I talked a lot. You did. Okay. So Sorry. your mouth is probably a little tired. <laughs> uh, you should send me a training. Uh, nope, none there either. Okay. So I have for the moment satiated all all questions. I think so, but I think um, you know when it comes to some best practices that you're seeing with parishes especially ones that you've either built or have um, trained recently, or even ones that have been with us for a while, what are, can, you, can you elaborate on some best practices that you've seen as far as um, yeah, parishes that are doing a good job of putting a lot of good content out there that people are finding useful? I can. I thought you might. Thanks, friend. Uh, along with this, just a, a quick thought is, um, we are thinking about hosting um, a Salutio conference. So one, we need a name for it. But two, um, uh, it, yeah, it would be something in, in Wichita, uh, maybe the Spiritual Life Center, uh, 
it'd be a day event to where uh, we'd have a session in the morning, we'd have lunch um, together, and then um, have an afternoon session. Maybe have a session for for folks uh, that want a refresher, maybe like a pre-conference thing, so maybe they show up an hour early, and then they could go and run through um, some of the basics of website editing. But, uh, you know, our goal at Solutio, as Travis is kind of just talking about best practices, um, we want the church to communicate digitally and we want them to do it very well. So um, how can we help uh, parishes to, to do that better? Well, first of all, um, I think one of the items is, you know, you have to be open to it, right? Um, you, you have to take this on as a challenge or something that you want to do better. Um, we see this happen all the time from the from the secular world and how they are changing how they're communicating and the different tools that they're using so this includes websites emails apps um facebook twitter all kinds of social media snapchat um there are lots of channels to work with um, there's some secrets around some of them and, and and the ways to use them and certain audiences that they might uh, work with but really um, our specialty is is around all digital communication. We've had lo lots of different examples of, of working in those channels. Um, as well as we know that we have folks uh, out there that also have, have great things to say and have done some very innovative things that, that we take from. And we're like, oh wow, they did this and we <coughs> add it to our, our list of items to, um, to work with. So uh, we'd love to have maybe some of you share those as well. So. Um, if there, uh, we'll eventually put out an announcement. I think we're going to do it kind of irregardless. But um, to get some feedback from you as uh, what particular issues, um, I think the the day would be scheduled around um, you know different forms of communication. So uh, what are the best websites looking like? What are the best uh, email uh, systems looking like? What are the best social media platforms looking at? Uh, what are the best apps doing? Um, and so kind of get a wide array. Maybe have a uh, a panel. Uh, of folks to answer questions uh, so you can get some good practical advice as well. So, um, yeah, it'd be something in Wichita, probably something this fall. Um, so if you have an interest in that, certainly let us know. Um, yeah, positive feedback will help us kind of determine whether or not, you know, uh, kind of what size this event will, will happen. But if nothing else, we'll probably just host some kind of an event for the folks out here in Wichita if nobody wants to come visit us, which is okay. Uh, but, but we'd love to have it. We'd love to have you. So anyway, so that's the idea that's coming. Um, I'm going to pull up a document as far as Travis, what Travis is talking about at a um, something with uh, best practices. Um, our team went, uh, we got together oh, a couple of months ago, and we started to take a look at, you know, who are the all-stars? Um, who are the folks that are just really crushing it? And so uh, we took a look, we took a look at all kinds of different categories, and so we'll just take a few moments to share some of those. But they might be things that are doing uh, bilingual sites well, uh, ones that are using really good uh, rotators. Um, we even had categories like ones that are really good that are dark, and ones that are light, uh, ones that have neutral colors, ones that have blue highlights. So anyway, we did lots of those. Um, so some of our favorites. One thing uh, that has been coming to light recently a lot is menu organization. Um, and mobile kind of factors into this as well. There is this competition between, and, and we'll even see it, so let's pull up Christ Our Hope just because I have them here. Um, there is this competition with uh, menu items and then um, different items on your front page, uh, you know, that, that help to bring light to things. Here's the thing. When you're looking at how to find something, you uh, right, we want to help people find it quickly and without frustration. Now, just because when you look at a website and you see it in a particular way, we need to keep in mind that not all audiences see it in the same way. So someone that is very, you know, sees things very structured and hierarchical, they're going to look towards the menu. And because everything should be in the menu, and that's a little advice from us as well, um, don't hide things away that the only way to, do, to get to them is to click on some button, like donate, right? Sure, that should be a button down here, you know, if, if you're going to do that. Here's online giving for Christ our life. Our crust, our hope. At least that's the best <laughs> that um, but it should also be somewhere in the menu, I, I feel. Um, because that way, different people that look at it in different ways will see that. 
Then there's the visual or visually oriented folks, and they're going to want to see things in pictures. They're they're going to they're not even going to they're going to have a blinder on with this menu because they think that you know uh, if they want to see something uh, like uh, what times masses or something like that, they're gonna, they want to see that right on the front page. So here it is for them. Um, so that's kind of a a visually oriented person. So the, the key around this, I feel, is to keep in mind both audiences. We can't put everything everywhere, but there is certain, there are certain things we can do visually to make things pop out, little buttons or whatever, um, on the visual side of things, um, you know, connecting with pictures, um, and then also having a well-structured menu. So um, some folks that we had, um, that had interesting menus, we thought, um, Let's bring those up. So Church of the Blessed Sacrament, I think does a good job. You notice that they don't have too many menu items um, up at the top level. So there's a lot underneath about us. They have a blog. Pillars of Stewardship kind of lists out all of their different organ uh, their um, different organizations and ministries to get involved in. The school, and then uh, they're a sponsorship parish. So they have a list of sponsors. But they kind of simplified a lot here. Um, a lot of the content that people, uh, one technique they used in order to kind of pare this down was um, to use these, these grid pages. Um, I call them a ministry page is what we call them internally. But if I click on, say, hospitality here, I'm going to get to a lot of the other items, right? So altar society, babysitting during parish events and so on. These are different ministries folks can get involved in. Um, and uh, this makes it very quick and easy to scan through if people kind of, they know that they want to know, uh, to, to learn some, uh, to be in a ministry that's involved in hospitality, prayer, formation service, or one of these groups. There's also a full ministry listing. If you know what you're looking for, say you're looking for the Knights of Columbus, well, you could just go through this alphabetical list, find what you're looking for, and get on with it. Um, or if you're kind of wondering a little bit more, you can you can click on one of the particular areas. So I thought that was a very interesting uh, way to look at the menu uh, to get people that wealth of information, that kind of catalog of things. So that was one that was interesting. Here's another one, um, St. Anne's in Marietta, Georgia. Um, these uh, actually, these, these type, um, Again, they want to bring out mass times as being something very important. So they just actually put the content right in the menu, which I thought was very innovative. That was something different. Um, so if you hover over mass times, there they are right there. Um, it's not actually even a menu. Um, these are really just kind of links. And their menu, again, this is a little bit more mobile-based, but their menu hover over it. Now you get to all of the different kind of sub-areas. Um, so it's a simplified menu, um, but there's some real depth underneath those menus once you get to them. Uh, CTK Top, uh, sorry, I'm using our internal codes. C, uh, Christ the King in Topeka. Um, they, they don't have a home. Their, their home link is, uh, you click on the big icon at the top. But they have welcome, prayer, service, education, evangelization, stewardship, prayer slide. These are things that people are looking for. If I want to get involved in prayer, these are all the different items, retreats, sacraments, music ministry that I can get involved in. Um, they have uh, some different quick links, we call them here, and then uh, down below, uh, some additional kind of visual items. For me, this might be a little bit on the, the uh, too many buttons, but uh, again, um, it just kind of depends on, on what you want to focus on. But um, their menu, I think, is very uh, sectionalizes those things that people are interested in very well. Spires of Faith, another one. This is a unique situation for them. They have, uh, I think it's five, five or six um, different <clears throat> locations in one parish. I think they have two priests, and it covers a, a very vast area. So for parishes um, that are out there that are combined with um, many other parishes or many other locations kind of thing, you have different worship sites. They all kind of call it something different, but that's okay. Um, uh, this is a good example of them really coming together. And I even love their name, the Spires of Faith is really creative, um, as opposed to, you know, taking a look at some type of, um, you know, geographical or top, you know, uh, kind of thing that <clears throat> some people will come up with a combined name, but uh, Spires of Faith, I thought was pretty cool. Um, and so they organize their things, uh, so parishes, and then they have them listed here, sat in schools um, is a pretty long list. And those, some of those are combined between some of the different locations. Um, 
faith formation, getting involved. But these guys, if you kind of look through here, they do a really good job of combining these items, uh, these different parishes in the many different locations um, in a very interesting way, I thought. And then finally, another example uh, that our, our team came up with that we liked as far as menus um, was St. John Newman in, uh, in Lilburn. Um, so about us, news, okay, that's a pretty typical item. Stewardship, uh, this was great. So know your faith, live your faith, share your faith. And something you see here is people, that you're, you're, you're directing them towards actionable items. So, so know your faith. It's, it's something like, yes, I want to do that, as opposed to just listing what it is of, you know, know God. You know, you're, you're, or you're, it's a kind of a command, you know, it's a statement. So I thought that was cool. Faith formation is another good uh, good item. And what's great about faith formation is you can include so many things underneath that as opposed to PSR or CCD or whatever you call it. Faith formation then can include um, you know things for the young people as well as the teens and as well as the adults. So it works out well. And then they have an entire menu for um, Spanish, uh, their Spanish ministries as well. So those are a few examples of some menus. Um, Else. We have other examples, but do um, let's see. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any additional new questions, but um, yeah, when it comes to um, to general strategies and things to keep in mind when you're updating a website, or how you know if you're. Um, if you're in a spot where you're considering a redesign or whatever the case might be, I think that and what I when I'm talking to parishes that are considering joining up with our team, a mindset that I think is prevalent, um, at least with ones that I'm talking to about joining up, but I also in, in visiting with some of you uh, over the course of your your working with us is trying to keep at the forefront of your mind who the website is going to be most directed at, uh, and so. You know, I was talking about how under St. John Newman, they had uh, know your faith, live your faith, share your faith. I think that things like that that are speaking to your people, um, that's always going to be the primary emphasis of the content and the information that you should throw out there. Uh, there should also always be a good balance as well towards the uh, welcoming of new folks, those that either aren't Catholic or those that are coming to the parish because they're moving to town, or whatever the case is, there does need to be the balance there. But when we look at uh, the statistics as far as who's visiting the site uh, from a geographical area, it's almost you know 85% are coming from, from town, from your town, or your general area. And then uh, obviously there's some from outside, and that might be the ones that are moving into town or visiting, et cetera. But always keeping that in mind, because that then, uh, that becomes the guidelines by which you you consider. Hey, should this go on the website, or hey, should that go on the website, etc. Um, so I, I always tell people, what are you getting the most calls about? Um, you know, a given website will receive several thousand page views a month. Um, some parishes, um, tens of thousands, literally tens of thousands of page views every month. Um, so they're seeing a tremendous amount of traffic. People are not just coming there because they're bored and they don't have anything else to do. They're coming there seeking information. Uh, when is um, our meeting tonight? Or what's the phone number, I guess, for the parish? Or when is uh, when are the mass times for the, the, the holy day coming up? Um, or, you know, what what kind of things can I get involved in? You know, so um, they're coming there for information. So either they're they're getting that getting it there or not. And so if they're not getting it there, a lot of times they're calling into the office. So if you want to know what like may need to change on your website, take a look at your call logs, uh, take a look at, you know, what are the most requested items. I always tell people, uh, you know, the most popular day for your website will be um, Ash Wednesday. It is for almost every single parish that we work with. And uh, that answer comes out very quickly after they think about what do they get the most calls about. Um, so taking a little bit of a look at that and even like, you know, what would a corporation do? Think about like the, in, in their marketing, right? Um, they're going to look at what's the lowest hanging fruit. What are things people concerned about? So are we below keeping a call log of saying what kind of requests are people keeping 
Like that's what we would do as a company if and, and support. Guess what? We log what kind of tickets are being um, are, are are being passed our way. So we know what our uh, biggest areas for opportunity are, right? We do that. We keep a log. We we we, we do that. And then we'll talk about it on our team with Jackie and Christine, sometimes Andy, and we'll go through that and we'll try to address those particular items to the best, you know, if we can, to the best of our ability. Some things are always going to be kind of that way. But, you know, keeping a log of every single phone call or maybe an, an email, and then you'll know kind of where your weak points are um, and where to put information. So um, if people are always calling in about funerals, you know, if that's, uh, you know, some uh, particular parishes have more of those than others, um, then have a section for that and, and be able to point people towards that because the next time that comes around, um, you know, they'll know where to go. Um, sometimes parishes will use the alert area for almost all of our parishes. We put at the top a, ban a banner area that if there is an alert, um, it, it, it kind of expands down and it'll put like a pink box or a red box up at the top. Um, I've seen people use those for, for announcements for funerals because there's something that's urgent um, and, and uh, you know, they're not going to wait for the next, you know, bulletin go around. So you're seeing that kind of use, but that only comes after you start really addressing what are those hot button issues. And you don't know those until you do a little bit of data collection. So, yeah. and yeah, and I think, you know, even just starting off with surveying you, the, the receptionist or the secretary or whoever does the majority of answering the phone and asking them to think back, okay, what are the main things? And then from there, you, like Al said, you could just have a simple spreadsheet because in the end, the website should be able to bring efficiency and effectiveness, right? Efficiency and allowing people to find information quickly on their time, right? Uh, because it may not be, may not match the office hours time and then effectively in the sense of like engaging them, bringing them in to want to learn more and also being able to effectively communicate. Uh, and the, yeah, and the, oh, the other thing is that your analytics. So, uh, if, if everyone that's listening to this or watching this should have access to their analytics. If you don't, you can let us know and we can get them for you. Uh, we send out the monthly updates. And we send out the monthly updates that at least give you the, the page views and the number of visits. But there's a lot more there that you can look at. You can look at what content are people coming to. Um, and you can find out if you do make a change or you do highlight something like in the picture rotator, are people using it? Are they clicking on it? Are they learning more like you're wanting them to do? And so you can you can actually it doesn't just have to be this thing that you wonder about you can know uh, and and the tools there and the Google Analytics that you can learn so that's a powerful thing that I don't honestly I don't know how many of you are taking advantage of it because we haven't necessarily done a survey uh, but I know we use it for our site uh, to see how our customers coming to us our parishes and Catholic organizations coming to us to learn more about us and how are they getting there and then once they get there. What are they looking at, and and what at what page are they leaving? So all that stuff can be found right there as well. Um, <clears throat> just keep in mind that your digital web presence. So from your 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 email, your website, your app, your social media, they are marketing tools. This is marketing one on one. Right. The, the, these are you are. Um, talking about you want people to join your community. You want them to be involved. You want them. Um, to come to your events, right? Um, if you had Matthew Kelly <clears throat> coming to your parish and you didn't tell anybody about it, or maybe you put a small little blurb in the bulletin, or 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 maybe you said after one daily mass you said it, right? You wouldn't just hide it, right? You'd put it in all of those different channels because it doesn't matter how wonderful a speaker he would be if nobody knows about it. Doesn't it doesn't matter? Nobody's going to be there, right? You have to get a word of mouth going. You got to get you know use these different tools. So um, your website is a gateway for people to see what you're all about, but also your, your main audience is your current parishioners. So what do they need to know? So however you're using email, your website, be thinking about these as, as, as uh, marketing tools. And what <clears throat> I think a lot of times we fail to realize is we have incredible tools like we've never had before. Um, you know, I often kind of use the bulletin as an example, um, but you know, it's a piece of paper that we don't know. We know how many we hand out, which is an important number, um, and, and it's a lot, but we don't know how many people cracked it open, how many people read a particular story, right? In the email world, 
in the website world, in the app world, we can tell exactly, we can know exactly right. how many people looked at a particular item, how many people clicked on it on a particular item, um, how many people uh, opened that email. We can tell the read rates. So like as, as no time before, we can tell amazing kind of statistics and, and are we using those? Are we using those like the secular world would be? Yeah. They are all over this. They have all kinds of targeting. You wanna know why Facebook is worth billions of dollars? Because they can target their audience. To, to market to them in a very particular way right. and, it, and there's a lot of genius around it as far as like your interests and your friends and, and things that you might be genuinely interested in and getting marketed at like certain products that you may find valuable that's great um, so uh, but it all comes down to like it's because these are effective marketing tools they're not just some kind of checklist to have of yep we got a website yep we send out an email yep right. we, we do this um, we need to be thinking about them as communication tools they're very effective but in, if used in a haphazardly way or, or used um, you know not kind of up to date they're not going to be the tools that you want them to be so that's part of I think why we want to have this conference we want to kind of talk about these strategies get people excited about them show them good examples of these different types of tools so that way um, they can communicate Ultimately, the gospel message to these people, whether they they're coming into the church new or whether or they're kind of recoming into the church and, and we're helping them to to get involved um, in the day to day life. Yeah. You know, um, right. yeah, a lot of movements are very exciting because they're 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 new and, and there's there's um, just kind of a, a uh, excitement towards the faith and that's great. But like, we have to maintain people. We gotta we gotta sustain them. With the sacraments, with these programs, with the fellowship, um, and so to do that, we got to get them involved. So once, say, uh, you know, our our, our uh, parish just ran the Christ Christ Life program, which was great for our parish. We had tremendous amount of involvement, but um, now we have to take them and, and in their excited state, and we got to plug them in. You know, somebody's got to be the sacristans, the lectors. Somebody's got to you know be involved in the and in, in the good works like the Knights of Columbus do and stuff. Right. And so. Um, and, and that's really where people build those relationships and, and are really plugged in. So um, we feel like websites, emails, and this constant kind of communication engine that you can create helps people to stay plugged in. Absolutely. It's kind of, it's essential. Because again, if Matthew Kelly comes to your parish and nobody but knows about it, it doesn't matter that, he, that you paid thousands of dollars to get him there. So we got to get people plugged in into that information. So anyway, I'll step off the soapbox. This is good. So that's our hour uh, of power. Uh, like I said, it's really great. It was wonderful to have your questions um, beforehand. So we will keep the um, page going, solutiosoftware.com slash power. Um, and you'll be able to see this episode as well as we'll probably, we'll just kind of keep an, a running archive. And you can continue to ask questions. That would be great. That'd be very helpful uh, for us to get questions beforehand. Um, we'll try to host one of these about once a month. And um, yeah, there we go. Awesome. Any questions you might have, we'll be glad to answer them. So thank you so much yeah, for thanks, joining guys. us. Uh, it's good to be here. A little bit a bigger crowd than last time. Sorry about uh, our last hour of power. I, uh, I couldn't figure out how to get it started. Like I couldn't find the link. I don't know what I was doing, but. Uh, we've simplified. We've simplified. That's right. So we learned. I learned my lesson, and the fact that I totally forgot it, that it was going on too didn't help. So, <laughs> anywho, all right. Well, thank you very much for See joining. You next month. See you again next month.